So we have just a little bit more to go. I think I'll try to cover if then statements and for and while loops in this video. And then do just a little bit of basic 2D plotting in the next video. And that'll be a wrap unless I decide to make any addendums in the distant future. So I made a point to cover M files before we do these because it's really best to do them in M files. You could actually do these directly in the terminal, but it's just kind of a pain to do it that way. Uh, and these do work for both scripts and functions. So let's start out with relations because to use if then statements and while loops, you have to know how to you have to understand something about relations. So if we have two elements and we want to test the relationship to each other, we can do that. Like is three less than four? Uh, FreeMat returns one because one means true. Three is less than four. If I did three greater than four, FreeMat returns zero, meaning false because three is not greater than four. And um, so let's go ahead and talk about just a few specific relations. Then I'll give you a list of relations. Now let's say uh, a is equal to four. Now that's not a test relation. That's I'm assigning a is equal to four. Well, what if I want to test is a equal to four? Then I use two equal signs. So a equal equal four, that returns one because a is equal to four. If I do a equal equal five, returns zero because a is not equal to five. So one equal sign means I'm assigning a is equal to four. Two equal signs means I'm asking is a equal to four. Um, similarly, if I want to do is a not equal to say five, I will do I'll put a tilde before the equal sign. So a tilde equal five. That tilde is the key above the tab key on a standard keyboard um, that returns one because it's true that a is not equal to five. If I do a not equal to four, it returns zero because it's false that a is not equal to four. So <clears throat> that those are the basic relations. Uh, I have a list of some of the basic relations right here. If I remember to, I'll copy paste this into the video description. So this just means x is equal to y. Is x equal to y? Is x not equal to y? Now here we have a greater than or equal. This is an inequality, a non-strict inequality. Is x greater than or equal to y? So that means if you have greater than than and equal to, that test is greater, greater x greater than or equal to y. This means is x strictly greater than y? which is what we did in the example just a second ago, three is greater than four. And um, down here we have, these aren't really relations, but they're, they're uh, something that you, need to te that you use in testing. So this means if we have statement A and statement B, um, if we do or A comma B, one A or B or both of them are true. This is very similar to Excel's um, uh, functions. They, they do or and then in parentheses like that. These don't work in FreeMat 4.0. They probably work in FreeMat 4.1. These up here do. These down here don't. Uh, these probably work in FreeMat 4.1. They do work in Octave and probably in Excel. I'm not Excel. I mean, they do work in Excel. I don't know what cares about Excel. Um, uh, MATLAB. They probably do work in MATLAB. In fact, I'm pretty sure I got those from uh, MathWorks' website. But if you want to do an OR in... in... Uh, <clears throat> in FreeMat 4.0, you actually do this bar right here. So, a is equal to 4 or a is equal to 5. Is one of those two things true? Answer is yes. If we want to do an AND, we'd use the ampersand. So, are, are both of these statements true? The answer is false, because they're not both true. Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, do an example of an if-then statement. And to do this, let's make a very simple function. So, where was it? Here it is, the free meta editor. So let's make a very simple function. Function y equal test func func x. So I'll say if x is greater than one, and I'll go ahead and, and um, uh, I will do the anatomy of this in a second. Then y is equal to four. Else y is equal to 37. End. So, oh, I want to go ahead and set this as uh, test func dot m. 
So this is the anatomy of the test function. Now, first I say if. Now if this is true, if this relation is true, then it's going to return at y is equal to 4. But if it's not true, it's going to go over to here. So if this is true, do this. Else, if it's not true, do this instead. So let's go ahead and test this. This should already be, yeah, this is already set to always on top. So I'll do test func. Uh, now I'll do 2. This should return 4. And it does. Uh, 0.5. Test func 0.5 returns 37, because this turns out to not be true. Now I'll do test func of 1. That's going to return 37, because x is not greater than 1. It's equal to 1. So uh, this else, so I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me go on to the next part. So this else is not necessarily, it doesn't have to be in there. Uh, because if, if we were to comment this out, it would still work just fine, but it wouldn't. Re it just wouldn't return this 37. So if I do test func of zero, it just gives me no output. So not having the else won't break it, but you probably do want it in there because you probably want want it to do something otherwise. So this is just a basic example of an if-then statement. Um, and don't forget to always end an if-then statement with an end. And now let's look at a slightly more useful function, the sine function. I had it somewhere. Here it is. That's sine S-Y-G-N, not S-Y-N-E. Um, now this function is already available in Octave and MATLAB and probably in FreeMAT 4.1, but it's missing from 4.0, so I had to add it manually. Thankfully, it's not very complicated, so it makes for a good example. Uh, and this one involves an else if statement. So I'll say if a is greater than zero. So my if my input's greater than zero, my output's going to be a positive one. Otherwise, else if let's do another test. So if it's greater than zero, my output's positive one. If otherwise, if it's not greater than zero, my output's going to be negative one. And if it's not greater than zero or less than zero, then my output's going to be zero, meaning that the input was zero. Now this presupposes that your input was a real value number. It's not a not a complex number. It's not a matrix. It's just going to be uh, if a is it's just going to be positive, negative, or zero. So let's go ahead and test that. Sine four gives me positive one. Sine negative four. No, I'll just go to negative three to make it a little bit different. Gives me negative one. Sine zero gives me zero. Okay. Now let's look at uh, for loops. I'm going to go ahead and make a just a script. I think um, let's make a for loop in a script m file. I'm going to start out setting m equal to zero. Now say for k is equal to one to one hundred. M equals M plus K. End. Now I want to end with the uh, showing what the output's going to be, and I'll make this uh, test file dot M. So let's go ahead and do this here. Test file, and the result is 550. Now what this does, I s first set M equal to zero, then say okay when K is one, add K to M. Now make k2, add k to m. Make k3, add k to m. Um, so then it goes all the way up to 100. So it ends up adding, this ends up being a summation from 0 to 100. But I don't have to necessarily do it in steps of 1. This does k1, 2, 3. Well, what if I want to do, oops, what if I want to do 0.5? So now I do, don't just go 1, 2, 3, I do 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5. And I do that instead, and it gives me uh, 10,050. And I don't necessarily have to go in a positive direction either. See, this goes from k from 1 to 100. Well, what if I want to go from negative 1 to, to negative 100? So I can go, I can change the step to a negative value, and it'll go down to negative 100. So then I could do that. This should give me negative 550. Uh, not 550, 5050, negative 5050. So you have you have this k um, does starts here, goes to this step value, ends here, and at every iteration it goes through whatever instructions are in the middle here. Then don't forget to end it with an end. So we've we've gone forward, we've done step of 0.5 and gone backwards. 
now let's make things just a little bit more complicated again by turning this into a function. Now let's go ahead and change these back to the way it was. If you have no step in there, it defaults to a step of 1. Now let's turn this into a function. Oops. So now, this is going to, instead of... Oops. This needs to end at M. Instead of just going from 1 to 100, this is going to go from 1 to whatever output I put. So 1 to X, whatever input I mean. And then it's going to report back the value of M. So test file of 100 should give us 550. Test file of 5050, oh, whoa, that'll be huge. <laughs> 200, it's going to be um, 20,100. Test file of 50 gives me 1275. Now let's look at uh, a somewhat more complicated example. This is actually part of a homework problem that I had last semester. And um, this is just, I don't want to go through every individual part here, but just have an example of, okay, this these four loops actually have a purpose, they have a use. Um, so you can see this one actually doesn't just go from one to a number, it goes from one to um, the the uh, column dimension minus two of whatever your input matrix is. And this reduces a matrix to Hessenberg form using an algorithm that was given to me in the textbook. Uh, and Hessenberg form is kind of like upper triangular but you have one additional non-zero diagonal below, just below the main diagonal. So let's go ahead and use that. Say we have A equals random, uh, let's go by 6 by 6 matrix. And we'll do Hessenberg. And that gave us a Hes upper Hessenberg. So we see everything, not below the main diagonal, but below the diagonal, just below the main diagonal, turns out to be zero. And let's go w look at one more slightly more complicated example. This is the reason why I wanted to show you this is because this has a for loop inside of a for loop. There's a Q there. That's not, that wouldn't make any sense. This has a for loop inside of a for loop, and I just wanted to show you that so you can see. Oh, you can do that as well, and that is sometimes very very useful. Um, now I forget exactly what the Ar Ar Arnoldi does some, something called Arnoldi iteration, but I don't remember exactly what Arnoldi iteration is. It does result in upper Hessenberg though. So um, that was a couple, few examples of for loops. Now let's do while loops. In my mind, I tend to think of while loops as something pretty similar to combining for loops and if-then statements computer science people might get mad at me for saying that, I don't really know. But um, let's go back to the test file.m and let's get rid of the function, we don't need that anymore. And let's look at an example of a while loop. This doesn't have a lot of practical purpose, but it's just something that demonstrates why it works the way it does. So what we're doing is saying, while this is true, do this. Then test this again. If it's tr if it's still true, do it again. If it's still true, do it again. Then if it's not true, break out of the while loop. So what this is going to do is say, start out as k is equal to 0. Is k less than 100? Well, k is equal to 0, so it's less than 100. So let's add 1 to it. Uh, now k is 1. Is 1 less than 100? Well, yeah, it is, so we'll add 1 to it. Does that all the way up until k becomes 99? Then it says, is k less than 100? Well, it's 99, so yeah, so add 1 to it. So then it'll say, um, is k less than 100? No, now k is 100, so it's not less than 100, so we break out of the while loop. So the answer is going to end up being 100. So test file, it ends up with k being 100, which is really not too surprising. Um, so it, if the statement is true, it's just going to do whatever is below this. If this statement is true, it's just going to do whatever is below this line. And when it's going to check to see if it's true again, it just goes, does it again. Um, so now let's do something just a little bit more complicated again. Let's try to figure out what the smallest positive number that my computer can represent using freemat is. Uh, I'm going to be taking this by doing this by taking k equal to 1 and then dividing. 
type this out, then I'll explain what it does. So, computers do arithmetic in uh, base 2. So that means if I want to figure out what the smallest possible number is, I keep dividing by 2 until the com and eventually the number is so small that the computer just thinks it's 0. So it's, it's not going to get to be 0, but the computer will think it's 0. So um, what this is going to do is say, okay, k is equal to 1. Is k not equal to 0? Yeah, it is not equal to 0. So I'm going to say, okay, j is equal to k. Now I'm going to do divide k by 2 and set that equal to k. Is k equal to 0? So that gives me 1 half. Then it goes down to 1 fourth, then 1 eighth, then 1 sixteenth, 1 thirty second. Um, I can keep going and try to impress you with my arithmetic skills, but I won't go very far. <laughs> so it's going to keep doing that until eventually it gets so small that the computer can't divide by 2 anymore without thinking that it's going to be 0. So let's go ahead and do this. So the result is that the smallest number, this j, turns out to be 4.9407 times 10 to the negative 324, which is a very, very small number. So if I take that, so that's, that's what j is. If I divide that by 2 anymore, the computer just thinks it's 0. Because it's already so close to 0, the computer can't go any further than that. Uh, so that's just an example of how to use a while, an another example of how to use a, a while loop. And I want to end this with one more, just slightly more complicated example. This is, um, now this is, this looks pretty simple. It's actually the result of some pretty interesting and complicated um, uh, numerical analysis. I took this, I didn't come up with this myself. This is taken out of Golub and Van Loon's matrix computations. Um, it's just used the ste steepest descent method which only works for Hermitian positive defi definite matrices. And it solves AX equals B iteratively. So let's go ahead and see if we can use that. And, and this uses a while loop. And I'll, I'll go just a little bit of explanation here. The difference between AX and B, B minus AX, that's what I'm just finding here, that's the residual. And as long as that norm of the residual is greater than a certain value, I'm going to keep doing this iteration until eventually that residual becomes so small that the difference between AX and B is really, really tiny. So now let's go ahead and, and do the steepest descent method. Remember, this only works for um, Hermitian positive definite matrices. So that means that I can't just use any random matrix. So I'll have to take a random matrix and then make it Hermitian positive definite. So now I will do b equals random 4 by 1. Oh, sorry, this should be 5 by 1. Because this is a 5 by 5. So a divided by b gives me that. So this is a different way of figuring out what the solution to ax equals b is. It has certain applications. Um, whenever you have certain kinds of matrices. So that's just an example of how while loops do have a practical purpose. All right, that concludes this video. I'll see you in the next video whenever we do just some basic plot 2D plotting. It'll probably be a pretty short video, and I'll see you then.